All right, everyone, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna do another unboxing. Now, I didn't really plan to do two unboxings so close together, mainly because I did not expect this to come quite so soon. I'm sure a lot of you have seen in the mountain bike world, there's a lot of 360 cameras being used these days. In Sea Otter, I saw a camera company called Rilo. Now, I didn't get a chance to speak to them then, unfortunately, but I did reach out to them when I got back uh, to see if they'd uh, fancy me doing an unboxing and use of their camera. And I'm very happy to say that they were well up for the idea. It was only the other week I even sent the email and it was only the other day they even said they'd sent it and it's arrived already. So I'm gonna unbox this, get it fitted to my helmet, bike, chest, wherever, and go out my bike. So let's get this open and see what it looks like. I've actually got a knife this time, a bit easier, let's see. Oh, look at that. Slices through. Cut away from you, Ali. Cut away. I think an axe would be quite a cool thing to open a box with, but... Oh, okay, there's multiple things in here. Let's get this out. Let's get this out. Let's get that out. Is there anything else? So what have we got here? Right. Obviously got the camera. We have got the grip. The... Well, I can't remember what it's called. What's it called? The selfie stick. That's one and okay a sync cable so uh, let's, just, let's just get on with the camera oh, oh, God, clumsy oh, definitely like i'm not sure if the youtube colors are on purpose or by accident but yeah if they're on purpose fair play oh 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 that's way smaller than i thought it was going to be check that out so here we have the Rilo 360 degree camera. I was expecting something bigger, so good start. This is actually super lightweight. I'm not sure if it's got the battery in it, but I'm not gonna notice that on my, oh, look at that. No, it does not have the battery in it, so it's gonna weigh a little bit more once that's in, but ooh, that is nice. That is nice. It's got a metal build to it. Uh, I think with metal and plastic, so it actually feels pretty quality. You know, you know it's good when it's got that like, cold touch to it, don't you? Even the packaging with its fabric pull handles. I'm liking it. Right, everyone, so I'm going to point out now, I am not paid by Rilo to do this. They have given me a camera for free, so thanks so, so much to Rilo, but my opinions are not going to be biased. I am going to give an honest review on this, so any reaction I'm having now is genuine. This carry pouch is actually probably the best carry pouch I've ever seen in my life. That I don't know how to describe it. That is actually just really, really nice. <laughs> I think I'm almost as stoked on the carry pouch as I am with the actual camera. That is awesome. Obviously, carry on here, we've got the battery, which is tiny, like that. Yeah, that's light, that's light. So then we've got sync cables, we've got charging cables, and another sync cable. Do we really need this many sync cables? We've got multiple options there. Sweet. So, okay. Camera is looking good. Packaging is looking good. Uh, we have got the selfie stick. Nice. I really hope this does fit on GoPro mounts. Otherwise, I'm a bit stuffed in, that, in getting this on my helmet. But the moment of truth. Please. Oh, it does. It fits GoPro mounts. Happy days. That means I don't have to swap any mounts on my helmets or make a bodge mount or anything like that. So, good stuff. And there you go. And then, pretty much point that in any direction you want and then just edit it afterwards. Choose whichever angle you want. Do you want it to look like a little tiny planet? You can do that. Do you want to choose a normal 1080 view straight ahead? You can do that. Following someone in front of you, following someone behind you. You don't have to stop and swap the camera around. You can literally choose what angle you want to use in the editing, which is, I think that's going to be a game changer, just to be able to choose afterwards what shot you want. Riding down a trail and a deer's running by the side of you? No worries, you can choose that angle afterwards. Riding down a hill with someone in front of you or someone behind you? No worries, you can choose who you want to show on camera afterwards. Absolutely amazing. And I think 
from what I've seen, one of the biggest selling points of this camera is the image stability. If I can get rid of a heavy gimbal and just use this and get the same result, which it looks like you can from all the, the footage I've seen online, again, that's gonna be a complete game changer. Right, so it's now time to get out on the mountain bikes and see how this works. So let's get on with it. Well, the weather has cleared up, which is amazing. Absolutely chucking it down earlier. So I have come to Cathkin Bray's mountain bike center. I'm currently sat in my van because it's pretty damn windy outside and it's just gonna wreck the audio. So I'm gonna sit in here and just say, I'm gonna put on the Rilo and I'm gonna test it against the GoPro Hero 6 that I've been using. Now I would test it against a Fusion, I just don't have one. Now right off the bat, before I've even got on the bike and put these on and started filming, there's a couple of big differences I can already tell between the two cameras. Firstly, the GoPro has a lot more adjustability. You can change the frame rates, you can change the image quality up to 4K, you can change the microphone settings and you can change the exposure as well. Uh, that's a big advantage if you're out in the mountains and it's cloudy or you're filming in some woods, you know, you can uh, adjust for the light. The Rilo doesn't have any of that. This is a fit and forget camera, which is a good point and a bad point. Bad points are that you can't adjust this to any light settings. There are no image control settings. The big advantage of that, however, though, is it's so simple, it's just a fit and forget. You don't have to worry about being in the wrong settings. You either take a video or you take a photo. You know, it's hard to get wrong. There's been many times I've been out filming with the GoPro and I've had it in the wrong setting and it's just ruined or you know made the footage a lot worse. With the Rilo, that's gonna be pretty hard to do. So, you know, good points, adjustability, bad points, you can get the adjustments wrong. Good points, you don't have to adjust it, bad points, it's sometimes it'd be nice to be able to adjust it. Anyway, I think that's enough chat. I'm gonna go stick these on my bike and head up the hill. Right, so I'm here at the top of Cathkin. I'm not sure if you can see, you have got the beautiful Glasgow in the distance there. My house is down in there somewhere. You can see a bit of rain in the distance. I'm hoping that holds off. I am gonna send myself down here. This is the first time I've ever been down other than rolling down on my Inspired. Uh, my flatmate, John, who you know from vlogs, he was just in California with us. He actually dislocated his collar, um, his shoulder even, uh, going down here just the other day. I'm gonna go with GoPro first, come back up, put the Rilo on, and then try the, I've got a handlebar mount, I've got my chest mount, and I've got to test out and see how this new mic works. Hopefully it doesn't just pick up all the rusting of this and my heavy breathing as well. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay, folks, all right, I just want to have a disclaimer here. I am on a 160 mil travel bike with a headwind. I am struggling to clear these jumps. This is embarrassing. Right, I feel like I need to even lock out my suspension for this. This is, yeah, this is hard to get the speed, guys. Bear with me. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've actually been putting off coming up and riding here because I figured this bike is gonna be just too much bike, too much suspension. I have my suspension fairly soft with slow rebound uh, for the enduro stuff, the big mountain stuff, just to try and help my arm pump. And it is not good for jumping. So that's why I've put off coming riding here. I wanted to have a shorter travel bike, which I'm currently building, a new trail bike, which is uh, gonna be more suitable for this kind of stuff and tricks and stuff. But at the minute, if I had grippier tires on my hex, I'd almost rather do this on a fully rigid bike. You do not need any suspension to ride down this at all. Anyway, I'm gonna do run number two. I'm actually gonna try and clear the jumps this time. And I'm gonna try my chest mount. A lot of people like the chest mount, a lot of people like the head mount. 
I generally like the, hel like the head helmet mount. I think it looks a bit smoother. Your head has its own suspension unit in it. The chest mount, I think, generally looks a little bit rougher and you often get mud spat up from the front tire, which goes on the lens. So generally, I quite like the head cam, but yeah, let's see. Let's see how this one looks. This one's often a lot harder to get the angle right as well. Quite easy to have it pointed too high up, too low down. What do you reckon? About that? So hard to tell. And I think that goes to show the Rilo has a distinct advantage there. Doesn't matter where you point it, you're always going to capture the best angle because you can choose the angle afterwards. Okay, so let's do run number two. Uh, please excuse the no entry sign. It is actually open. I'm not being naughty and sneaking in. Flipping nosedive that one. That's going better so far. Ah, oh my god. I don't know how you're supposed to get the speed, seriously. Right. Well, this is embarrassing so far. Whoa. Keep on the other side. There's another disadvantage. With the chest mount, you can hit the camera on the stem. Right, so that's run number two done. I still can't do these jumps. I feel like such an amateur at the minute. This is actually really embarrassing. Maybe run number three will be the one. And number three is also the time I'm going to use the handlebar mount. I think the handlebar mount is going to be the one where it really shows the disadvantage of a GoPro and the advantages of the Rilo. With the GoPro fixed angle, I can only point where the handlebars point. It's going to be pretty rough because there's a lot of vibrations coming through into the bike. Whereas the Rilo, I can choose to follow the trail. I don't have to stick with the handlebar angle and the image stabilization, while it's been good on the GoPro, is meant to be pretty phenomenal on the Rilo. So give this a try. I'm not holding high hopes for the GoPro, but we'll see anyway. Let's see how run number three goes. I should have probably done the GoPro, done the Rilo, and the GoPro, and that kind of order. But oh, started now, so I'll finish. Right, I'm now filming on the Rilo. One thing I forgot to mention down in the van is the GoPro obviously has a screen. You can see what you're filming, which is quite handy for vlog stuff, setting up shots, what have you. The Rilo doesn't have a screen. However, because it is literally filming 306 degrees, it's filming everything, you don't need a screen. You don't need to see where it's pointing because it is pointing everywhere. So I've, I've just attached it to the helmet. I don't even need to worry about getting the right angle, which is pretty amazing. The other thing I'm interested to see what looks like with the Rilo is you can go to a, a little planet world like this, which hopefully if I've done that all right, looks pretty wild. I'm not sure if I'd really want that going down the hill, but it's, it's a good option. You can get in some interesting photos with it as well. So let's take run number four down here, head cam with the Rilo, and let's see if I can clear all of these jumps. Clue, I'm probably not. <laughs> Here we go, here we go, down the hill, 
down the hill. Right. Well, I don't want to be in a gear that easy. Right. Let's try this. Come on, let's clear these jumps. Scrub those. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Scrub. Scrub. Bit of an ET in the air there. Pedal, 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 pedal. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys can hear the headwind coming out of that car, but it's pretty intense. Whoa. And a tailwind on that one. And a headwind. And a tailwind. Bit of a nosedive. Now we've got a headwind. Oh my god, that headwind is brutal. Right. Head cam. How did that look? It's a shame there's not a rider in front and behind me. It means I could choose who to follow or who to film. Sweet. Next up was it chest mount. Right, I've now got the Rilo attached to my chest. The first advantage I found over the GoPro is I can have the thing pointing up the way rather than GoPro which has to be facing down. The advantage being it's more out of the way, it's higher up on your chest which in theory is more stable and I can access the start and stop button really easily. Obviously being a 360 degree camera, being on my chest, I'm not going to be able to get a shot facing backwards from this angle, but the rest of it should look good. So I'm going to hit run number, is this five? Number five? And see how chest cam looks. So here we go. Here we go. Right. I've now decided there's too much of a headwind going this way, so I'm probably not going to try and clear that last jump this time. I do get quite excited sometimes. Ooh, ooh. I can boost that one there. Right, here goes. Scrub. Scrub ET. And... I'm going to try that. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> so, Rilo chest cam done. Does that look good? Right, next one, go for the handlebar mount. I think this one could be quite interesting. Right, so the Rilo is now on my handlebar mount. I'm probably silhouetted because it's pointing straight up in the sky, but bear with me. I try to choose an angle which, in theory, I can choose whether to look at me or straight ahead. Now, there is going to be a point where the two lenses are stitched together. Now, I've tried to get this so it's up in the sky up there somewhere, uh, so it's not as noticeable. So, in the editing, I can choose to look at the trail, or if I am talking, or if something interesting happens, I can point at me. Uh, so, that's quite a good advantage. The GoPro, you can literally only film forwards or backwards. I'm going to give this trail another try, see how this jump's going, although this headwind is an absolute nightmare, and see how this one looks. So, let's get on with it. Right here. There we go, right, here it goes. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've forgotten something. <laughs> Amateur. Reset. Take two. There it goes. even worse. That's overshot that one, that first one, which didn't give me enough speed for the second one. And let's not even try that one. Man, that head tailwind goes that way, missed you. Best one 
Look at that. Let's come here when it's not so windy. But we're not here to be rad. We are here just to test some cameras. <sighs> so how was that angle? What's your favorite so far? Right, swapped bikes. I'm not gonna hit up the pump track. It's not the most ideal day for it. It is windy as anything. I'm not sure you can see how fast the clouds are moving across the floor. But it'll be a good test. And by the way, this is the new Cathy Ray's pump track. I haven't done a video yet here. Uh, I really need to because this is the best pump track I've ever ridden. I will come and make a specific video sometime. So for this video, I'm not going to go into too much details and do too much riding other than, you know, camera testing stuff. So anyway, I'm chatting too much. Let's try the GoPro on the helmet and see how it looks. This bike feels so weird after being on the big bike. Bars are so narrow. Straight in the headwind. Heavy breathing. Okay, so that's one lap with the GoPro. I'm gonna go quickly put the Ryla one and do a, and, and do a lap on that if I can get my breath back. Rylo's turn. Let's see how this looks. headwind okay go pro chest mount here we go one lap ow my wrists to get enough speed because the headwind on that back straight there that sucks right low chest mount here it goes see if i've got the energy to do another lap this is hard work my legs are giving up the ghost <laughs> So at the end of this, would I recommend the Rylo instead of a GoPro? Probably not. No, not instead of, but as a really good addition to a GoPro. Because of my initial mistake thinking the Rylo had built-in storage, to me, I was going through this whole test thinking that it was a major flaw, thinking, you know, if you're going up a mountain, you're going to run out of space. But actually, because I've now found out it has an SD card, and it's only a 16 megabyte that comes as standard, because you can upgrade that, you can now just film pretty much as long as you want, as long as you've got spare batteries and so on, which actually makes this a way better contender than I first realized. However, one of the main advantages I think the GoPro has is the adjustability. Now, I think this is a great fit and forget. You can just attach it to your bike. You don't have to worry about where it's pointing and it's only got two buttons, so it's hard to get wrong. Now, to me, that is a massive plus point. 
But the thing that the GoPro can do is possibly film in darker conditions. A lot of the time when I'm riding, I'll be in woods and it's Scotland, so it's gonna be overcast, dark. The GoPro, I can change the white balance and the ISO and I can you know, try and make the best of a bad situation. The Rilo, although I've not been in any woods yet, I am only taking this by word of mouth. The quality, I think, goes quite downhill once you get into darker lights, which is fairly standard on cameras anyway, so it's not too much of a surprise, but I need to go test this in some woods in some dark conditions and just make up my mind for myself. So, am I gonna continue to use the Rilo? Yeah, you bet yeah. I think the image stabilization the Rilo gives is incredible. Normally you'd have to wear a great big heavy gimbal, which you have to take extra batteries for. It's another thing to remember to charge. You have wires if you want to have it in your backpack. You have to have it attached to your chest. It's restrictive. The image stabilization, the stabilization if I can speak properly, is incredible on this. It's the equivalent of having like an extra pound of gear on you just wrapped up into one device. So that alone makes me want to continue using this. And then there's the fact you can have this attached to your handlebars and you can film the trail or you can get reaction shots or you can attach it to your helmet and then you can film the person in front of you and the person behind you. Uh, to, again, that's an actual real advantage. So I think for my future videos, I'm probably gonna take the Rilo and the GoPro out. I'll either have the Rilo on my chest for some really cool shots or on my helmet if I'm following people and I'll have the GoPro in just the opposite location just as a backup one or when it gets dark. So I think that's gonna be a really good combination. Just two fairly small cameras and it just saves a lot of gear and I've got all my bases covered. So I think, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think there's gonna be some good video footage in the future. So I'm gonna wrap that up for you now. I hope you found that really interesting. It ended up being quite long, I'm sorry. But if there's anything I've forgotten to cover, just say in the comments, perhaps I can go and uh, try that in the future. Or if you've been using a Rilo yourself, if you have any top tips, uh, for anyone, and myself included, yep, just please say. Don't forget to let me know which angle you liked the most, so when I go out in the future, I can just make sure I get one that pleases the most people. Thanks so much again to Rilo. You guys are awesome. You got this camera out to be super, super quick, and I just cannot wait to get up on the mountains and just get some epic footage with it. And thanks also to everyone who watched this video and all the comments. Be fluent, and I'll catch you next time, so see you later, everyone. Bye-bye.